The concept of centralized pain is really a pretty simple one. Anything that disturbs the bioelectricity of the spinal cord or brain may activate this thing called a microglial cell. It's, a, it's an immune cell or in the nervous system. And once they get activated, it causes inflammation. And everybody knows what inflammation is because everybody's had a pimple or a boil or uh, you know, some red spot on their skin. So it's inflammation is inflammation. Uh, and so once you get this neuroinflammation inside the spinal cord or in the brain, it traps the memory of the pain and therefore the patient has constant pain that doesn't go away. It can be mild, moderate, or severe. It can cause you not to sleep, be depressed, not to function. And so those severe cases are centralized. And it means there's neuroinflammation there. And the message to the practitioner is real simple. Every pain patient needs to be quizzed to find out if that pain is constant and doesn't go away, then that means it's probably centralized, and that means you're gonna to have to use a different set of drugs and a different approach to the patient. Yes, we're still gonna use our symptomatic opioids and neuropathic agents and antidepressants, but the time has come then to go further. We now have blood tests. For example, uh, we have old-fashioned inflammatory markers called C-reactive proteins and erythrocyte sedimentation rates, but your laboratories now are offering what's called a cytokine panel. There are some specialty laboratories that are starting to, to issue uh, tests for brain markers. And these things are going to become progressively available. And so this is a, a good advance. So we actually have serologic or blood markers to determine some of this. We know what the history should be. And then uh, protocols are being developed to add to what we're doing now. In other words, I want to make it clear, we're not going to throw out Anything we're now doing, we're going to add to that for the benefit of the patient. Frankly, the number one problem in this country right now in pain management is that centralized pain and neuroinflammation is not being recognized. It's not being part of the lexicon. And if it is not recognized, Somebody decides to do an epidural block, they put in stimulators, we, we throw opioids at them, whether by patches or pills, or we send them to physical therapy, we send them to psychologists, but they don't respond. And so the patient is cast out, uh, sort of floating around this country, going from institution to institution, doctor to doctor, therapist to therapist, and they're not getting any help. And so if you do not recognize that neuroinflammation is in that nervous system, and, and you're not going to treat it specifically, you cannot expect that patient to respond too terribly well. So the unmet needs of pain patients out there are, is not just the fact they can't get opioids, because a lot of them could even get their opioids and still don't well, do well because their neuroinflammation is not being treated. In other words, you've got to treat the neuroinflammation as well as the symptomatic treatments. And then if you really want to get sophisticated, we now have something called neurogenesis, which is the use of hormones to make the nervous system regrow. So we actually have patients now that have been on neurohormones over five years. And some of these people are getting near cures. And so it's a whole pr progress and a whole new way of thinking. But the, the issue is this, if you don't, under, don't recognize the neuroinflammation and the centralized pain and treat it, you can expect a patient to flounder. Today, the new protocols to treat neuroinflammation are so much safer than opioids and so much easier to administer and so much cheaper that in the primary care setting, a good nurse practitioner or even a bad physician or whoever can implement a lot of these things. In other words, uh, I look at it as my own job to come up with something that if you're a primary care practitioner in Tallahassee or Helena, Montana, you can do these things. Just because I can do them in Los Angeles, that's not helping many people. So these new things that are being developed are being developed for every rural county, every small town, every primary care setting in America. This is not for 
people sitting in Los Angeles like me who have access to resources and are high-powered specialists, because that's not going to take care of America. America's got millions of people with chronic pain, as we all know. So it doesn't do a whole lot of good if I'm the only one who can treat them. It's got to be out there where the action is. Every community in America.